today on The Crunch, we want to introduce something a little bit different. Our new project, Off Market. Released fortnightly, Off Market is a look at the Perth property market from the people who are working in the trenches. Join me, Shane Beaumont, Ross Hunter, and a special guest each fortnight as we dissect the latest property news. Keep listening now for our first episode and please let us know your thoughts. And if you'd rather watch the show, you can find us on our Facebook page at Crib Creative Perth on Thursday nights. Welcome to Off Market, where every fortnight we are going to be chatting about all things real estate, from the truth behind what you're reading in the media to what is happening in real estate in your little patch of Perth. This is going to be pull no punches, no hold barred, look at the WA real estate market from people who are in the trenches doing the work every week, and also me. So, <laughs> while I work alongside real estate agents... Every week, I am by no means a real estate agent, so we do have a panel of experts that we want to introduce first up. Um, so sitting next to me, we have Shane Beaumont, sorry, on the, uh, on the yes. right-hand side. Shane has been selling real estate <laughs> for over 10 years, specialising in the southeast corridor of Perth, specifically in the Gosnells market. He was WA's most recommended agent in 2018 and 2019. Now, Shane, would it be fair to say you are one of WA's most prolific users of social media? Um, Unfortunately for many, maybe. Uh, look, I'm very active on social media. Um, I enjoy it. My wife gets a bit over it sometimes, but it is uh, unfortunately part of the job in many circumstances. So. Beautiful. I'm sure, you're, uh, I'm sure your sellers are happy about that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> now, our second panellist sitting right next to me is Ross Hunter. Ross has worked in the property industry in Australia and in New Zealand for many, many years, uh, and he's one of WA's most well-regarded auctioneers and sales coaches. Roscoe, how many uh, auctions do you think you've called over the years? Well, the many years thing first, Jess, oh, about many, many years. <laughs> Unfortunately, it is not 30, but uh, auctions over 7,000. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There you go. We've got an expert on yeah. our hands. Yeah. So uh, now the formalities are done with guys, we're going to yeah. kick off with our, uh, with our first weekly section, okay? So each show is going to be broken up into segments. They're going to be timed. So there's no, no waffling from you guys. You need to keep it short Certainly and sweet. Not. Um, our first section this week is Under the Hammer, where we're going to break down the auction market in WA. Yep. Now, Roscoe, this is clearly your area of expertise, yep. um, and I'm going to throw you a question to kick things off. Sure. Anyone who follows property, especially on the East Coast, yep. um, where there's a lot of auctions going on, a lot more than, than certainly here in WA, yeah, yeah. they probably would have hit, heard the term clearance rates. Yeah. I want you to break that down for me and explain what that means. Yeah, really good question, Jess, because there's a lot of um, a lot of discussion around, look at the clearance rates in the East Coast versus WA. The, the clearance rates in the East Coast, just to really um, quantify what they actually mean by that versus WA, where we tend to use the term under the hammer. Um, over there, the clearance rate is, they have to report into their relative um, uh, institutes by the end of the day. And that's any properties that have gone to auction that day and cleared during the course of the day. Not necessarily sold under the hammer, but they may have done the auction at 11 o'clock and by sort of four o'clock they've got a contract together. So it's what they've actually cleared during the course of the day under the auction process. Mm -hmm. Whereas over here, we tend to use the term under the hammer, what physically sells under the hammer, which really skews the whole thing because, you know, being involved in as many auctions as I am, there's many auctions that we, that we conduct on a Saturday and we just need a little bit more time to put them together. Yeah. And they're sold by two or three o'clock in the afternoon. Mm. And we sort of, so that gap is there in relation to, we need to get in sync with the East, so we all talk the mm. same language and it puts re relevancy in the whole process, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it's interesting that we've got this perception in WA, and as much as I love auction, it's probably not, um, the, I guess, the most favoured method in a lot of properties I do sell. Um, but so I right, think, mate, we'll, 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 we'll yeah, paint so, to the dark side. I, I think, but I do think it's, I think so often the day of auction can see, be seen as a success or fail if it goes under the hammer, yeah. not what the outcome is. It's just yeah. a part of that process. Yeah. Whether it be private treaty or auction, it's all a process. 100%, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, obviously I do think that we need to get that mentality in WA that if it doesn't go under the hammer, mm. that doesn't mean it's a fail. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's the outcome that obviously proceeds. And I think Rewa... Um, one thing they are very good at is, I guess, um, making it very clear, the average days on market for auction um, is, I think, in the mid-30s in WA, yeah, yeah, which is yeah. pretty phenomenal given that median, obviously, the actual average days across the board is closer to 90. 
Well, so, bet that option. Third of, third of their time on yeah. market if you're yeah. auctioning versus. Well, it is, and, and, and Jess, it's like in real estate terms, and Shane will back this up, certainly. Time is money in real estate. Mm, yeah. the, you know, the, the longer the time, the less the money. Mm -hmm. And like you look at my year, that's that's the years pa passing, you know, really quick. We'll, we'll put about 180 to 200 million dollars worth of real estate through the auction process this year. And we know within 35 days, we're going to clear about 82 to 83 percent of that. Okay. okay. So the actual under the hammer rate mm -hmm. is about 55 mm -hmm. percent, but the, the clearance rate, which is what Shane's saying, this the amount, the days on yeah. market. Is, is halved. Yeah. That means all those people have gone through that process. Shane, would you agree? It's probably fair to say they've achieved a premium for their property because it's clear within 35 days. Yeah, the, the, the ability to create urgency in that first, whether it be, again, private treaty or not, the best chance of selling for a premium is going to be when fear of missing out yeah. is there. Yeah. Uh, so I guess it's really interesting. We have people come through the second week of home opens and going, oh, Shane, it's been on for a bit. It's been on for a while now. It's mm. two weeks. Mm. But the difference is 10 years ago, two weeks, you had two opportunities to go out on the weekend to see properties. Yeah. Now, when they're watching MasterChef, mm. Love Island, these sorts of shows, they're on their phone all night. So every night they're looking at the property, the perception becomes reality. And that's why it's so important that, you, I guess, in selling in this market, you understand the worst thing I hear when I bring an offer in the first four days is, oh, it's only early days. Because mm. it's not how long you've been on the market, it's how long that buyer's been in the market searching mm. for your property. And mm. it's so pro... It just happens so much quicker these days. Um, so Shane, why don't you auction your properties? <laughs> it's a very good question. Um, it, I guess there's a bit of a lot of dealing with first home buyers. Um, it's quite daunting for them a lot mm. of the time. They do watch the block, and I guess and there's still that mentality that oh, if it doesn't go, um, both yeah. for vendors and buyers, if it doesn't go on the hammer, it's a fail. Yeah. Um, but the likelihood of someone coming in cash buying in my market, uh, let's say a property is going to go for three hundred thousand, for the cash buyer, smart investor, that's no emotional attachments, they're probably a 260 cash buyer. Mm -hmm. um, so they do have their place, um, but I guess any area across Perth, I think you've got to look at um, with auction, the supply and demand. Re Reality is in Gosnells, if they didn't buy my property, there's probably five or six of the same property. Yeah. If you go to an area like, um, let's say Shenton Park, hot skill zone, average days on market is probably less than 10, I would have thought, if it's priced right. Yeah. Um, you're going to have a lot of urgency in a short amount of time. So. Yeah. Um, it can work really well, um, but in my market, I don't exclude anyone, yeah. um, but um, I love the method. Um, my dialogue is basically auction without the day, Yeah, really. So yeah. that is bang on five minutes, but yeah. I think next show we do want to come back to um, that cash, the importance of having a cash buyer in an auction and, yeah. and I guess why you need one yeah. um, and whether or not if that wasn't a rule, mm. would that affect... Yeah, the, it's, use of it's, yes, yeah, it's probably also like we, we've got a bit of a catch cry, and that is you either sell or make it saleable. Mm. Yeah, you know. So what what the auction will do, it, it'll it'll capture the buyer pool, and they can either bid it at the auction or they're there mm. ready to put a contract up. So yeah. they, you can work in many different ways. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Beautiful. That is it for Under the Hammer. Our next segment. We're out. We're moving on to the real press now. We, we said, I like Under the Hammer. Yeah. We nah. like that. Can't well, this, we stay this there? This is your specialty. Nah. We've got five minutes, guys. You've got to get <laughs> us your gold. Get us your gold in five to minutes. To be continued. To be continued. Well, we just <laughs> got the wind up from you the got boss. The wind up. You from got the, the director. <laughs> um, our next section now. When In the opening, we said we were going to tell the truth behind the media, yep. what the media is portraying. There's a lot of people in Perth who might have been following the media's reporting, um, and they don't know whether they're Arthur or Martha, essentially, <laughs> because... One minute the market's going mm. up, the next minute it's down. We're in, you know, the lowest slump we've ever been in, whatever it might be. So mm. we are going to bust some of those myths yeah. um, and explain what's really going on. Now, Shane, um, I know you've brought along one article that's really mm. got on yep. under your goat this week, and I'm going to show it here. <laughs> yeah. This one. Well, yeah. I did the actually. Home front. Yes. Well, just about that, I guess there was a bit of a, I guess, the perception that, um, and I, was, I actually rang in 882, spoke to Gareth Park about this. Oh, did you? Excellent. The, 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 um, the perception was that... I know you 65, Shane. I know, I know. <laughs> but the, the agents, I guess, was, I guess to the public, it was seen that the agents were asking for a free kick. And I, I don't really think that was the case. I mean, to be honest, in this market, m my business and our business at One Residential has thrived. Um, it's probably a clean out we've had to have in the industry. Um, the professionalism, in my opinion, has gone through the roof. We really need to catch up with what's happening over east. There's some slick operators over there. Um, but I think that we're looking for that free kick wasn't really a, a true reflection of what was happening. The reality is um, entry-level housing, and we'll talk about, obviously, um, some numbers later on. But if you're looking at turnover, there's less sales that took place in, I think, the last 12 months than what happened in 1981. Now, Ellenbrook wasn't there. Byford wasn't there. 
Now, these sort of suburbs have had that sprawl, Alcamos. So to have less sales take place than 1981 is a bit concerning. Mm. So I do think that we do need something to kickstart it. Um, I think, I know the builders have been struggling as far as their numbers, but having just the first homeowners grant on building, it, it tends to get that sprawl further and further out. Mm -hmm. I do think they need to get the established going, which will kickstart people, you know, getting out of that negative, uh, they're trying to get the economy going. Mm. Negative equity, people aren't going to be spending money down south, they're not going to be going to shops and going retail if they owe more than what their home is worth. So mm -hmm. if we're going to get that kick started again, like we did in 2014, um, I think we need to get something on established to chew through that supply. Um, but my biggest concern also is a lot of the retirees that are, if you're 65 years of age and you're on a big block, now 10 years ago, your property might have been worth 500,000. Where you're going, your care facility is probably 500,000. Where we're at now because of what's happening, your property is probably worth 350, but the retirement village is probably 550. So people simply can't free up that land to develop and they can't afford to retire because they just can't get into mm -hmm. these places. So there's two things there. One, obviously, aged care, these facilities need to be looked at with policy. Um, we need to get something just to chew through that there's those properties in well-established areas. Schools are there, train stations are there, infrastructure's already there. We don't need to build more. Yeah. That's where I think is where the government really needs to look at. We don't want any free kicks. We've had purple bricks come, transactions are down, we work on percentage basis, um, prices are down, yeah. mm -hmm. haven't whinged, but for the economy to get kick-started. Unfortunately, WA uh, and Australia, owning a home is the great Australian dream. That's what's going to get kick-started, in my opinion. All right. Yeah. So we did have an update on this. This article was from the 17th. Mm. So yesterday it was announced that the government are mm. taking away stamp duty on mm. off-the-plan purchases. Yep. Yep. Um, so we'll see, and that will obviously, you know, we'll, we'll have some feedback on that, I guess, next show. We'll see how, yeah. you yeah. know, yeah, if there's been tracking. anything rolling yeah. from there. Yeah. 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 Um, I had a quick article that I wanted to ask you guys about, which came across my desk, um, and it was this one, Sales Agents Commissions Tied to Vendor Ratings. Mm. It's from the East Coast. There's a new agency opening up over there, um, and they're planning to... Uh, They've, they've established the nation's first carrot and stick agency model. It gives clients direct influence on how much agents can earn based on the ratings that they're giving the agent once they've done a transaction with them. I wanted to know from you guys, I guess from a consumer's point of view, that sounds great. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do you guys think of it? Um, I'll jump in first if you like, yeah. mate. Look, it's to me, put the carrot and stick on to the side. It's about skill base. Mm -hmm. You know, for somebody to get a best, the best possible result, you need an expert. And I think if, if the, these type of people come into play and start sort of dangling a carrot to, to get the public to think the best, the best way for me to, to transact property is going to get the person that's mm. going to do the best deal up mm. front on commission, um, they're just going down a road that's, that's going to be very rocky. Because at the end of the day, mm. you know, as, as Shane said, this is the big Australian dream. Mm. Um, we're dealing with people's biggest asset. You don't want to play with that. You, know, you don't get a second chance to be first chance. Yeah. You, you've got to get an expert. You've got to get a highly skilled person. Something Shane said earlier on about you know, if somebody's considering coming into the industry, you know, they shouldn't be luring, be lured into something about a high commission mm. split. You should yeah. be lured into an environment that's going to teach yeah. you to be a highly skilled person mm -hmm. that, that will always get yeah. somebody the best possible result. Do you agree yeah. with that? Well, 100%. I think if you... We've seen a few agents that have gone... Like agencies that have gone down that really high-end commission split, um, which is great, but it, I think a lot of reps probably don't realise it does cost a lot of money to run an office, a good office. So the higher split typically, unless you're a really established agent running a business within a business, something's got to give, whether that's yeah. training, mm -hmm. resources, marketing. Uh, so I, I, I get a bit worried that if you are looking, in my opinion, the agency now is the best agencies. Now, most principals don't meet the clients and people's vendors. It just doesn't mm. happen. Mm -hmm. But the agency's role now is more about giving that agent the opportunity to grow the right resources and the agency will benefit from that and so will the agent. Yeah. But if you're trying to get people on the highest split, it's very hard to build a culture because mm -hmm. there's always going to be someone offering more. Mm. Um, if you, everyone's all in and everyone's a part of the culture, mm. I think you'll find whether it be a 5 or 10% difference in split, you will benefit threefold in being the right environment. Mm -hmm. um, and that's it from being a sales rep. From a sales yeah. rep's yeah. point of view. All yeah. right, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned experts, having an area expert, and that takes us on to our next topic because our five minutes is up. Yeah. Um, Chewing through it. I know. Mate, it's five, five minutes. minutes slide I'm sure by. the clock's right. I'm sure. I'm yeah, the lion's over here with one clock. You've got one. You guys oh, here, just, here comes the noise. Yeah, yeah. You guys just that. don't realise how, how much she's, you She's a goat. Yeah. <laughs> 
Now, our next section that we're going to be bringing every week is the hood highlight. <laughs> so this is where we're going to throw a spotlight on a different suburb in Perth. Yeah. And we don't just want to focus on some of the suburbs that we see in the news all the time, mm. those mm. kind of western suburbs or, you know, we're going to, we're going to talk mm. about all different yep. places. Now, in, in terms of agent expertise, I don't think you get much more expert than when it comes to you in Gosnell's area, Shane. Yes. You grew up there, yep. you've sold there for many years. Yep. Um, you know, you're all over it. So yep. we're going to throw to you for our hood highlight. Yeah, we no do not have a guest today. No. So you're you're our expert. Okay. Um, so let us know. Yeah. Tell, so tell us about Gosnells. I guess I was only speaking to Ross earlier. Quite often when we talk about the WA market in the news, it keeps really negative. Now there's certain areas like I used before, uh, I guess, Shenton Park, for example. One of the hottest areas in Perth, probably Australia, to be honest. Yeah, it's yeah. fantastic. Uh, Nedlands, uh, Ross Moyne, these sort of areas. So when, I guess, you're hearing that reported through the news how bad the market is, it's probably not a true reflection. And as an agent, it frustrates me because I follow some agents on Instagram and they've got 30 people at a home open. I haven't seen 30 people in, in, a, in a day of home opens. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very challenging in certain areas um, and different pockets, because for whatever reasons, are more popular. So to just say a blanket, I guess, summary of an area, I just don't think it's true. Um, I use Gosnell as an example, and I do sell all over Perth, so I get to see properties that are gone in a week, and we've just got people just lining up. But it, Gosnell's had a real challenge, I guess, with um, the investors coming out of the market, um, rents being obviously a lot lower, um, tightening of banks. Those investors um, have really pulled back. Um, so great time to be buying. Not that I'm trying to plug any properties, but it is a good time to be buying. <laughs> By the way, uh, we have 28 <laughs> Smith Street yeah. Gosnell's is really hot this weekend. <laughs> to, to, to put it in, to, to put it in perspective... Shane wants to see 30 people in the Yeah, no, that's right, yeah. <laughs> Um, so to put it in perspective, if you look at sort of five years ago, 2013-14, um, median house price in Gosnells was up around 380000 uh, Today it's down to 266000 But probably a bigger concern is we had about 550 sales happening a year. We're going to struggle to hit 200 this year. In, it, since 2014? If you look at per year. So 2014 oh. we had you know, over 550 and we're going to struggle for the year to hit 200. Yeah, um, right. Now, there's a lot of property in the market. So house prices have pulled back basically 33%. Um, if you look at an area, again, like Shenton Park, um, I think 10 years ago, people were going, I wish I bought back then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Still not the case, obviously, um, in certain areas. So mm -hmm. they're doing that in encouragement of investors to get into the marketplace, first home buyers to get in the marketplace to chew through it. Um, I guess what's hot, what's not, um, good family homes. The, the area's got great schools, getting a much, much better name for the schools. Uh, good infrastructure, bus and train station. Um, so good family, four by two homes are really hot at the moment. What's probably not secondhand villas, and that's mm -hmm. probably due to the fact that you've got a situation where you have a brand new villa offering a $10,000 first homeowner's grant and a secondhand villa not. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it doesn't make you, a lot of sense. Gone, it's yeah. very hard. So yeah. secondhand villas have been hit really hard. Um, development sites through the area, land bank buyers over the last few years have, have brought up some fantastic buyers. No one's pushed the button developing it. Um, so but they're just sitting on them for They're now. sitting on them. And I, no. I think what's going to happen, if you look around, because those finished villas haven't been selling for enough, people haven't developed. But there is going to be a shortage, I think, over the next 18 months because nothing's come out of the ground. Mm -hmm. um, and that shortage will start to see those people push the button on those developments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, rents at the moment, uh, rental market was pretty tough there for a while, but people are starting to see actually rent increases. Mm -hmm. Myself, I've had a rent increase with my tenant. I've almost fainted, but Alana, that's what, what happened. Alana, what about Alana, our producer's got an investment property out there. Have they given you a rent increase yet? No. No? <laughs> no. Oh, we'll have so a word with your property manager. I think I took her tenant. So, <laughs> uh, so no, but there, there, is, there is better times ahead, I think. Um, but average days on market, again, in Gosnells is 92. Um, it's probably not a true reflection. I think you'd probably agree with this. What happens is if I go on the market, we don't sell after 90 days, then they come and choose me and hopefully we sell for 20 days. It's yeah. not really 20 days on market. Mm. It's really 110. Yeah. So that number, I think if you actually dissect it, it would probably be close to about the 130. Um, okay. And I think you'd probably say that in a lot of suburbs across Perth, it's probably not a true reflection yeah. of what actually sells. There's a lot that doesn't sell. Yeah. yeah. Um, so as a general area, um, really interesting. The biggest age, I guess, of people living in the area, the, I guess the, the gap is from five to 19, which means a lot of young families, mm -hmm. um, about 21% of people. Shane, yeah. just jump in there. You said about sort of somebody list of property and mm. they go through the whole agency yep. 90 yep. days then you might grab yep. it and sell it 20 yep. days so yep. there's your 110 10 days but yes 10 sorry 10 sorry mate God, 10, yeah, 10, right. 10, okay. 10. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you find though that if like yeah. your own yeah. average days on yeah. market yeah. what are they 
in golf. Uh, for me, if you've got the my, property off the bat my, first time, yeah, my average selling days yeah. of actually what transacts yeah. is thirty seven. Okay. Um, but there's things that don't like if we've got a development site that paid five fifty a few years yeah. ago. Yeah. I know it's a fail. Um, <laughs> But, for example, I just saw one recently. I sold to them for 525000 in 2014. Yeah. They've just recently transacted at three twenty five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of people that they simply don't have the horsepower to actually get out of that property. They want yeah. to. Mm. So that's actually transacting days. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I do think that average days is definitely... Not a not a true not reflection, a true reflection yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. 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 All right. Mm. That is our five minutes, guys. What? I know. Don't. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Gozzies oh, needs more than Shana, five minutes, mate. I'll give you 30 seconds. Drive in with trouble if Gozzies should have more than five. Yeah. If huh? there's anything we've missed, I'll give you another 30 seconds. Uh, no, look, um, imperative. One, really interesting. Uh, obviously, people get caught up in fantastic school zones. Ross Moyne, um, Shannon Park, for example. Uh, for the first time, we're actually seeing people with the cost of going to private schools actually moving to areas, and even in the further the mortgage belt areas, because of good schools. Mm-hmm. Um, it's definitely a trend, and I think a lot of people are actually moving to buy properties for better school zones sometimes than better zoning. Mm. Because short term, I think you have high chance of getting growth as opposed to waiting for these property prices to increase before we can develop. Mate, this is a huge point. In, like I was in New Zealand for 15 years in Auckland, and when I first got there, I was shocked how they market property. And the headline of the marketing mm. was the zone, yeah. the school zone. Yeah. I went, what's all that about? Yeah. And it's, I think it's, it's at the point. Now, if, yeah. I had, if I was listing a property mm. within the Churchlands High School mm. Zone, Shenton College, mm. you know, Ross White, yeah. et cetera, the headline should be what the zone is because it's, yeah. it's massive. Yeah. I wrote a property up for someone today and it was yeah. close to the beach. Yeah. Here's the schools that are in the area. There. Yeah. Well, I'll give you a way. really interesting stat. One thing I'm big on is data because I don't see many people at home open, so I have to look at the data to see how we're tracking. Uh, sold a property recently in a hot school zone, 1,000 views, 900 map visits. Uh, an average property in, in Gosnells at the moment with 1,000 views, you're probably looking around a quarter of views, so 250 views. So that's a good indicator that yeah. location yeah. is so important. And that's yeah. amazing feedback for an owner to say, hey, they've looked at the map, they've looked at photos, and they haven't done anything. It must be priced because mm. that's yeah. engagement. Mm. Yeah. yeah, 100%. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful. So each week we are going to cover off a different suburb. Mm. Um, we are planning on having a different expert, different agent in every week. If you would like to nominate your suburb or you want to nominate an area expert to come on the show, hit up the Facebook comments and let us know um, because we are going to have a panel of three for every show from now on. So, beautiful. It's like Agent X, is it? Agent like X. X. Agent X, we'll call them. <laughs> Alana, you like mystery that? mystery man. Agent X. Yeah. We should have, we're going yeah. to put a... I just want to see on the panel. Mm. Who do you want to see? Dick Slider. Nomination. No, we have a dick slide. We've got to have a WA agent, no, just I'm to kick things off. Oh, uh, we've got to get a larrikin. We've got to get a larrikin. larrikin. yeah. I think we've got to get a female. Yeah. Yeah. A, a larrikin female, even better. Tash I'm not allowed to say that. Tash okay. Okay, okay, done. All right. Yeah. So All put right. the call out for Tash. <laughs> <laughs> um... Now, this is, the, this is the part of the show where normally we take the opportunity to get to know Agent X and we'd throw some questions at them. Mm. Obviously, mm. we can't do that today. No. But we want to get to know you guys. And no. you, you guys actually only met when we kind of kicked this off I know. about a... Two weeks ago. Two no. weeks ago. We formed a few. Heard many great shit. things. We like each other now. <laughs> Yeah. So, <laughs> I've got 12 options booked over the next yeah, three weeks. Yeah. Um. yeah, he's coming to the dark side. <laughs> right. I have got eight questions for you guys. Yeah. I'm going to throw them at you. You've right. got you got to think quick. Is this Just. off the bat? It's off the bat. Are they real estate? No, they're not real estate. Okay. This is getting to know you, getting nah. to know all oh, okay. about you. Okay. All right? Yeah. Are you ready? Okay. Who's okay. first? I want you to answer simultaneously, but right. let someone speak. Okay, so you, you can go first. Oh, you, 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 you okay. can go first. Right. Age before beauty. Yeah, that's not... <laughs> <laughs> Boom! I'll take that. Have you got a boom button on that? <laughs> Mic drop. Okay. All right. Let's ready? Let's go. Come on. Best meal in Perth. Long chin. Ooh. Hot and spicy, just like life should be. <laughs> ah, I got that. Uh, duck spring rolls at Vans, followed by Orinchietti at Il Lido. Boom. Followed yeah. by the cutlet at Nolita. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the there's cutlet. A, yeah, that, a is that is very good. That's a bit of a go-to. Yeah, uh, yeah. Biggest... Or the, pe- the pizza at Bellissimo. Yeah. Very good. I said yeah. one meal. I said Sorry. one meal. Oh, come on. Sorry. Biggest, we're biggest. going for product place. We're going to go to these guys and get money. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Biggest stuff up. Biggest stuff up. Oh, God. Uh, my what? biggest stuff up was, commercial one, um, was in New Zealand when I we bought this network over there. It's part of our growth and made one big fundamental error. Um, I learned that nobody cares more about your money than you. And never, ever let somebody... Um, 
own something like that and run it and drive it without you being absolutely involved. And yeah, I mean. it costs a little bit of money on the way through. <laughs> Expensive mistake. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, biggest mistake, I made a few. Um, actually, what comes to mind recently, a friend of mine and the old coat tag told me to buy a share. Nagging, nagging, nagging. Didn't buy the share. I hear daily how well that share is going, so that's fresh of mine. Yeah. But they don't tell you the ones Too that they bought that didn't mistakes. do any good. No. What about letting go of Alana as your PA? Yes. Oh, boom. <laughs> no, isn't that Ten one of the great on victories? It still yeah, stings. It still <laughs> stings. Ouch. Um, worst habit. Worst habit? Oh, oh. I don't know. What, um, worst habit. My worst habit uh, would have... Shane's going bad. Really really <laughs> I'm, I'm, my worst habit would be I can't walk yeah. past... A switch and not turn it off if it's on. Wow. That's probably a good habit though. Yeah, but even if nothing's plugged in, yeah. energy, I've got to turn energy it off. Friendly. It's, it drives me nuts. It's a bit of the old O C D. Yeah. Um, yeah. Leaving just a smidgen in a bottle milk. and put it back in there. No, I'm gonna milk coconut water. Because oh. they feel heavy. The lid is heavy. And you feel there's something there, but there's certainly not there. Sam's cursing you day yeah. in, day out. That's probably the um, that's probably I get in All trouble right. for that. And also doing the dishes. Well, washing the dishes, but letting them drip dry. Oh, no, 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 no. You can't do that. You can't do that. Sort Biggest influence in your life? Biggest influence in my <laughs> My scary spice mum. <laughs> <laughs> nice. well, no. there you go. Um, biggest influence would be, um, be by, by being surrounded with some really amazing people. You know, it's just, I think it's the collective. Yep. You, know, you surround yourself with great people, and therefore you'll rise to that, yeah. yeah. Um, without a doubt, my mum. She's got amazing work ethic. Um, yeah, she's a very patient woman, my mum. So, yeah, that's my mum. I like that Roscoe said his mum and then took it back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, uh, yeah, sort of mum. <laughs> <laughs> I do love you, but you are scary. Yeah. Um, <laughs> most precious belonging? Oh. Um, has, has to be your health. For me, it has to be my health. You know, if, yeah, I haven't got my health. Mm. I've got nothing. That's really good. Beautiful. Really? Um, I was going to say my... my Dog, but I probably just say my wife, my dog, and my health. She's not is, a belonging yeah. mate. No, no. It's, uh, <laughs> I just see the health thing, mate. You, you can't get into trouble. Yeah, it's all but, good. Um, I think I be- the dog belongs. My dog is. is Your dog is a belonging. Your wife yeah, is not. Okay. Well done. I um, to her, I last question. <laughs> <laughs> Most over you saying. Oh. Um, she'll be right. Wow. <laughs> and it won't um, be. <laughs> I. Constantly, nothing, nothing's worse than I'm hearing our videos be played and we're loading them with social media. And I think, geez, I say leave no stone unturned too often. But uh, I have heard you say that a few times. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and uh, that, that would be the most common one. At the end of the day also. At the oh, end of the, the end day. Of the day. <laughs> at the end of the day. <laughs> at the end of the day. Oh, yeah. I've got to say, mate, at the yeah. end of the day. Yeah, yeah. Very cliche. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We, know, we know you a little better. That's nice. Yeah. That's a nice yeah. way to go. All right. We are very close to wrapping things up. Cool. But... We're not going anywhere without rolling out our play of the week. Okay. Mm. So, play of the week. Play of the week. I know you've both got a nomination. I've yep. got a nomination. Yep. Roscoe, do you want to go first? Yeah. My play of the week has to be. Oh, God. I've has lost to the be, page. It's there somewhere. It has to be um, uh, our newly appointed lady president. Um, we have Steph that? Dobro, who's launched yeah, her, own, her own brand, yep. the White House Property well done, Partners. Steph. And so I'm not sure if it's now... Um, Steph or Miss Dobro or is it um, Hello Madam, Mrs President? Yes, Madam President. Ma- Madam President of the White House. That's got Good to be play. play of the day. That is a play. great yeah. spread. I yeah. love that. I think Beautiful Steph, photo. I think Steph will like that, being Beautiful known photo. as Mrs President. <laughs> Sorry, Steph. I know if I'm in trouble. Right. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, um, Shano. So, uh, obviously, I do a fair bit with social media, um, but I think sometimes agents will take themselves a bit seriously, but I've been enjoying the banter of a few people, uh, Dick Slider I mentioned earlier, I find that just really entertaining. And also my cousin Vlad. So if you're not following them, make sure you check them out. Very good banter. I- I'm presuming it's banter. He might be actually like that in real life. And not your actual cousin, but my cousin mm-hmm. Vlad on Instagram. Yes. My, Is that correct? He's not actually my cousin. I'm happy to claim him. <laughs> yeah. um, very, very enjoyable. So make sure you check it out on friend. Instagram. I'm sure you'll be able to check him out. Very cool. Drives an Audi if you... I think it's the only person he follows is Audi. So. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> My play of the week, guys, is uh, is David Pickering and Greg Chapman from Acton Coogee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They've recently united forces. Okay. They've become a team. Um, <laughs> they put together this little video. This little video popped up on my feed the Control other day. Control her, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> 
You should have got one God. from somewhere the red dot. Sorry, keep going. Play of the week goes to Alana, guys. <laughs> no, David Pickering and Greg Chapman, yesterday they were putting out shout-outs for a, uh, for a team name. Mm. I don't know if they picked one yet, but I reckon Team Red Nut could be a winner. Are they both ginger? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> Greg, both might, gin- be a, Greg might be upset about that. What about, about the ginger that? nuts? The As ginger the nuts? Yeah. yeah, the ginger nuts. I don't know if Greg will be stoked about that, but... <laughs> If you've got names for them, again, comments, Facebook yep. comments, chuck them in there. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Um, if you've got a play of the week, we want to hear it. So yes. nominate your play of the week. We'll show it on the next show. Yeah. Um, and that is it. Nominate yourself. You want to be on. Nominate yes. yourself. Yep. Nominate. We want to hear from you. All yep. your feedback. Chuck it in Facebook comments. Um, now, before we wrap it up, I do need to thank Domain Hire and Styling uh, for hosting us in this beautiful venue. They're beautiful stunning. offices. Absolutely stunning. Stunning. They set up this set for us with yep. very little... I guess advice, or that's what they do. So thank you, sure guys. Sure, were like this. It's very nice. It's beautiful. Yeah. All the orchids everywhere. Yes. I know. It's Singapore. Stunning, and a huge mm. warehouse out the back that we might do a little tour of on another show. So mm. thank you so much. Thanks, guys, for your time. Thank no you, Jess. And, uh, nice we meeting will... you. Bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God, we'll see you same time, same place in a fortnight. We'll be here. Cool. Beautiful. Same time. Thank you. Woo! Done. Well done Cheers. Yeah. <laughs>